Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's recap what happened in yesterday's flash crash and also take a look at some cryptocurrencies which absolutely boomed through the flash crash. And these aren't weird Ponzi scheme coins like SafeMoon, which I'll also cover later in the video, but real deep solid projects. So we'll have a look at those as well. Thank you to the guys who were joining me on live stream yesterday. We had a massive turnout, over 4,000 people live. So if you're new to the channel, thank you so much. Be sure to hit the subscribe if you're new here as well and the bell notification icon if you haven't done so already so you can be updated when we have time sensitive content come out. Also like the video if you find some value from it. Let's start with the news. Starting over at my Twitter page and I posted this just before the crash and I also posted the video before the crash looking at a potential drop in the market. Now this isn't just some random calling every single top, it was a specific set of rules that we've learned from GAN. Now I posted this and funnily enough I just got the timing reasonably well and the market happened to crash just after that. But we were looking at it because of the set rules which I put in yesterday's video. So I won't cover that again. So if you aren't already, follow my Twitter over here. We're doing pretty well, 6,000. Join us over here for extra news and retweets and lots of good stuff. Safe Moon, just quickly, this is going nuts. It is bursting on the scene of Google Trends. Everyone is searching SafeMoon. There was about 110,000 searches in Australia alone. I don't know what it's like in your country. United States, look at this, seven days just booming. All I've looked at it so far is it definitely looks like some sort of MLM Ponzi scheme. Now, before you get really triggered and go and hit that dislike button, look at the project yourself. I'm not saying that you won't make money. I'm not saying that the project may not do something good in the future, but just the pure metrics of it all, buying the token and then they burn some of the token just for buying it, the amount of coins there are, the amount of famous people talking about SafeMoon, it's really got to that mass hysteria stage. Basically, people have asked uh, on my channel, where do I buy SafeMoon from? Now, SafeMoon is only on Pancake Swap at the moment, Bakery Swap, White Bit, and you got to look at the volume, and then also Bitmart. That's all you can see here on Coin Gecko. Coin Market Cap has similar markets that you can buy it from. Pancake Swap seems to be the most popular with the highest amount of volume. So if you are interested in swap uh, safe moon and you want to get some pancake swap seems to be the place. Now I'm not promoting this anyway. It's just people have asked so many times. So I'm just going to leave that here on the video. That's where you get it from. Following the channel, yesterday's live stream, massive. This is the video here that we're looking at in terms of where to see those signals for the Bitcoin drop. Let's take a look at the fear and greed from yesterday. 74. Yesterday, Extreme Greed 79. So it must have been, it was such a flash in time that the market dipped and came back and it hasn't recorded on the Fear and Greed Index because a lot of people were pretty, pretty fearful. So I think that we would have seen a lot further down on the scale if the fear had lasted longer than it did, which was about an hour or two. Coin Market Cow is a good one to have a look at as well. There's a lot coming out. Uh, we've got Terra Vature, which is a big project that we follow here on the channel. Gas Fee Resolution. Check that out. Hedera Hashgraph is a big one by guys. I know you guys post HBAR a lot. So there's virtual meetup coming up and some of the other bigger projects here as well. We've had Ethereum's Berlin hard fork. We haven't seen the gas prices reduce. However, I've got a little bit of news coming up for that as well. So let's dive into the Bitcoin news and why did it happen yesterday? Well, I could see it on the chart like we talked about, but if we need a real news reason, then we're looking at hash rates dropping because of a blackout in China because they have a lot of the hash rate which mines the Bitcoin and so when they had the blackout, couldn't be mining, scared, drops, that sort of stuff plays out in the market. I don't know if that's the exact reason but this seems to be the narrative that the media, the crypto media is pushing at the moment because people want answers. So that would be the first piece. Uh, almost USD 10 billion liquidated amid Sunday sell-off in crypto markets. The sell-off coincided with rumored and unconfirmed claims by a popular Twitter account, FX Hedge, that tweeted that the US Treasury may crack down on money laundering that's carried out using, using cryptocurrencies. Now, I also saw this on Meet Kevin's channel this morning. So he's a popular finance YouTuber in the States, one and a half million followers there. Uh, he's also talking about that. So if they want to crack down on it, then they might be putting some bans onto crypto. But it was such a quick flash crash and the fact that it didn't take out a previous solid low 
makes me think that it may have just been a bit of a scare in the tank for now. US lawmakers, so this is some positive news for, for Bitcoin. They were the reasons why it could have been the, the, the case that Bitcoin dumped. But here's some positive stuff. US lawmaker warns Treasury Secretary and Fed Chair not to ignore Bitcoin or America will fall behind. Congressman Kevin McCarthy has urged Treasury Secretary Jeanette Yellen and Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell not to ignore Bitcoin like they have been trying to. I do not want America to fall behind other countries. So hopefully that starts to overshadow all of the nonsense from Jeanette Yellen and Jerome Powell and they start to take it a little more seriously and really include it because obviously there's a digital digital one, the Chinese one, which is potentially trying to take over as a reserve currency, currency around the world. China is saying they're not looking to do that. However, what China says and what they actually do are generally two different things. Bitcoin. So if you have a friend in South Korea, see if you can team up with them. You gotta have a lot of trust in this friend. Bitcoin sells for 60, call it 66,000 in South Korea as kimchi premium resurfaces. So we know now Bitcoin is currently about 57 and a half thousand. Looking at the, Bit, the Bitcoin kimchi premium, uh, say it's around 65,000 in Korea at the moment. So there's a difference of about seven, $8,000. So if you can buy Bitcoin outside of Korea, send it to Korea, someone you know, someone you trust, not financial advice because they could just run away with the Bitcoin, uh, then they can sell it. So this is the arbitrage play, sell it for Korean one, then they've got to send the Korean one out of Korea back to a US dollar bank account or some other sort of uh, other fiat currency bank account in order to buy the cheap Bitcoin again, where we see it around 57,000 and continue that process. There are a lot of roadblock blocks. The trouble you could see is something like not being able to transfer Korean won. Have I got Korean won? I'm going to just call it Korean currency because I don't think I've got the currency right. The Korean currency out of the country. One, Korean won. Sorry. You've got to be able to transfer the Korean won out of the country. And I understand that that is quite a difficult thing to do. So if you've got a way around that, then this is a pretty decent arbitrage play for the time being. Ray Dalio is now talking about allocating 20% of your portfolio to BTC. At one point, Dalio, not liking Bitcoin at all. Then it was 1%, now it's 20%. Investors should allocate 20% of their portfolio to the leading cryptocurrency. Now he's saying that because of what's going on with the money printing and potential inflation and his view on the market that it should crash at some point. I happen to think otherwise, and that's not me trying to be an ass to Dalio. Dalio did get it incorrect in 82, thought the, the markets were going to crash and they didn't. They actually skyrocketed from that point. I happen to think this is going to happen again. I think Dalio has got the timing just a little bit out. I think we're going to be skyrocketing into around 2025, 2026. This is a stock market, not necessarily a cryptocurrency market, but definitely the major traditional legacy markets, the stock market and the land market, which you guys would probably call the housing market, property market. That stuff is going to be skyrocketing. Anywho, 20% of their portfolio into Bitcoin. I think it's probably not a bad idea. Definitely having some of my portfolio in Bitcoin, which currently I have almost 100%. Silicon Valley super angel investor, Ron Conway. If you haven't, go and find some videos on, on this guy here. He has invested in Google, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, PayPal, Airbnb, Square, Pinterest, just to name a few. Calls cryptocurrency the next multi-trillion dollar opportunity in innovation. Very interesting stuff. Crypto economy is in its infancy. So it's still early on. We do know there's a lot of money in it. It is gaining legs. It's getting legitimacy now as we are in this next phase of the bull market in our third or fourth cycle, looking at 2013 as called 2013 the first, even though it was one earlier, but this is the major one that people remember. 2017 and now 2020, 21. So we are definitely well and truly into it. But this guy, Ron Conway is uh, looking at cryptocurrencies having those next major opportunities like we saw with Google and Amazon, Apple, etc. So seeing Coinbase is one of those and I definitely think Bitcoin and Ethereum are in that pocket as well. Coinbase insiders dump nearly 5 billion in coin stock shortly after listing. So people that are interested and they're wanting to buy in at the open. If you didn't 
you've got better pricing at the moment. So the market's going to open in about six hours in the US. It's currently 6 p.m. here on the east coast of Australia as I record this, and I'll probably put this out in a couple of hours. So Coinbase CFO sold about 255,000 shares at a price of 388. That netted her close to $100 million. Now, CEO Brian Armstrong sold about three quarters of a million shares, netting him a total of just short of 300 million. So about 400 million all up. Now, this is only a small fraction of their total holding. So people are probably getting pissed like they're dumping on the, the dumb money, the retail investors coming in. But this is a very small fraction of their portfolios. It was less than about 10% we saw further down uh, down here in the article. Likewise, many Coinbase employees now have a stake in the company as 1,700 Coinbase staff were gifted 100 shares each as a thank you. So if we look at it in terms of the approximate closing price around 340 bucks, these guys all got about 34 grand at the current price. That is pretty sweet gift from the boss. Now there is institutional buying of Coinbase as well. It comes from hedge fund manager Kathy Wood, ARK Invest. If you guys don't know ARK Invest, follow that YouTube channel. They do great weekly wrap-ups of the market and how they see the technology market and the overall market. Really, really good stuff if you want to learn more about investing. Hedge fund manager Kathy Wood is placing a big bet on the exchange, having purchased over $350 million in shares for three different ARK ETFs. So over $350 million. These two alone, the CT, CFO and the CEO, sold a total of about 400 million. So just alone, Kathy, uh, Kathy Wood from ARK basically bought all of their shares for the, the ARK ETFs. Pretty interesting. Ethereum, don't sleep on Ethereum. I know a lot of small players in the in the space. We're all small, but you know, if you're only looking to put 50, 100 bucks into different cryptos or DeFi and the fees are just too much, and you're pissed off with Ethereum, don't be. If, don't sleep on Ethereum because the bigger inter, institutional players, they don't really care for $50 fees. They're, if they're paying $100 fees, whatever they need to do, it doesn't matter. You know, they're playing with big money. So if you want to play where the big money is, look what they're doing. So Ethereum is definitely in the space to be skyrocketing this year. Ethereum's transaction fees are still sky high, despite blockchain improvements. The currency is in the midst of a bull run. Three Ethereum ETFs will launch in Canada, Canada next week. This is good news for Ethereum because it's good news for crypto. Coin closed at $342 on Friday, proof that Wall Street is firmly interested in digital currencies. So basically, I'm just wrapping all that up there, looking at Wall Street, institutional investors, they're interested in Ethereum, even if the small retail traders aren't. This is for me, anyway, it's like the digital gold. Bitcoin is also a digital gold. This is just like a gold that can make me money as well. Let's have a quick look at the Ethereum ratio. If you don't know what this is, we're just looking at Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin's at 57,000, Ethereum's at 2,200. With what, with everything that's being built on Ethereum, we should be at least here. We should be at least half the price half the market cap of Bitcoin. So it's really just a fun thing here. 0 0.08 of a Bitcoin. We're currently at 0 0.04 of a Bitcoin. So we're getting there. We are catching up to Bitcoin on the ETH BTC pairing. So don't lose track of that. We are moving a little quicker than Bitcoin at the moment. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. And yesterday on the stream, I was looking at a closing price above 56,000. Can you believe it? We got there, $56,280. The reason being is that I wanted to see this bar get bought up to support the drop. Now, even if this happens to fall further over a period of a few days or a few weeks, I'm not overly concerned at the moment. The, the point that would probably get me very worried is if we started to break down from that 42 level and hold below that level. Some spike lows we know can recover and they can recover by 50% on the day. So that's just that whole bar split into 50% and 50% came out at 56 grand. And so we're starting to get a little bit of a push up from here. We had very strong volume on the buyback and because it's above 50%, we had strong uh, a strong close with high volume. That's a good sign. So the previous days that were higher in volume then the current low we just saw were the dump days after that top in February. So there's two very strong days down. And you can see the market continued to fall, but the volume dried up. So that's what I'm saying here. If we happen to uh, recover and then continue to fade out to test these lows again, this is what I'm looking for as one 
possible scenario, as one possible pattern to show that we could be uh, early in buying a dip or at a very good timing in buying a dip before we head up again. And it could take a week, two weeks, three weeks. That's not the point. The point is to look at the pattern and just feel comfortable in knowing you're buying a solid dip and a dip that should reverse rather than a dip that is going into a bear market. So Bitcoin's still looking sweet. The Bitcoin uh, dominance is, is, is starting to consolidate at this 52% level. Maybe we'll get a push up here and just test this low that we're seeing at around that 55, 56 level. But ultimately, I'm still looking to uh, for Bitcoin to break down and come past 50 and then 48% and then we'll figure it out from that point. But I definitely see Bitcoin continuing to fall over the longer period of time. Now, this could take, again, weeks to days, uh, days to weeks. But overall, I'd still see the dominance dropping here. Ethereum BTC pair we'll have a look at and then we'll get to that coin that I was extremely impressed with and something that I wanted to throw in my bags, which I pointed out to in a video previously. Uh, this here is Ethereum BTC. It had a dump, recovered, increased volume. It is Bitfinex, so the volume isn't at high overall. But uh, this just shows me that we are seeing strength. And you can see where the market came down to. Basically, those old tops and promptly reversed. So this is a strong sign that I think we're going to see a nice move up from Ethereum after the, uh, the rest of the cryptos begin to funnel their profits back into another crypto being Ethereum. That's where my bet is always. Uh, so the, the last crypto, which I was extremely impressed with, Sol, Solana. So Solana USD, I saw this dump to $21 and I thought this is looking beautiful. We had a 50% hit and we're going to find some stability and then take off. It didn't happen that way. It just took off, broke all time highs closed above all-time highs. That's strength after strength after strength in a dump. It, Yeah, I, I was left speechless just like I am now. I want to see this consolidate because this is a very extreme volatile pattern of just a dump to a spot on 50%. You know we know the 50% are very useful. And if you know how to connect them, know how to anchor the points, you'll see the 50% and know that they are fantastic buy zones. Why didn't I buy on the 50%? I got greedy. I thought we were going to see a consolidation at this level. I did not think we would skyrocket from that point and break all time highs within a dump. So looking at the hourly chart, it left me, yeah, it left me for dead after a few hours. We were already up and I thought, what the hell's going on here? But anyway, Soul and the entire ecosystem from the research I've been doing is a fantastic space and something that I want to start to put into my portfolio. Uh, we've got Solana, Something I've already brought up is Serum, which is SRM, and also Radium. So Serum is the decentralized exchange on the Solana platform. Solana transactions speeds of like 50,000 per 300 milliseconds. So call it around 150,000 per second. Fees are low. Everything is fantastic. It's one of those platforms uh, that is here to stay, I think, and could definitely test uh, Ethereum, if they can get some of the network effects to come over. So Serum is the decentralized exchange on Solana, and it also had a reasonable recovery after that low, but nothing like Solana. So Solana really looks like the, the mainstay. Now, the other token I talked about yesterday was, was Link, and Link, look at that, dump, reverse, back to old all-time highs. So yes, the other few days were, uh, were all-time highs, but these were the all-time highs that we're breaking out. Now we're consolidating above all-time highs. So uh, we talked about Link yesterday. It's Link BTC value recovered and just pushed to another recent high. Link is definitely, you know it's on my list. You know it's on our portfolio on SwiftX. So you can check that out in previous video. If you haven't already, check it out. Subscribe to the channel. They're the two coins that I love the look of through that bull market. They're big plays, but they are strong and solid with good outlooks, of course, in my opinion here on the channel. So if you found value from today's video, let me know. Hit that like button down below. It goes a long way to helping the channel out. Thank you guys who have come over from the live stream yesterday. We're going to be doing more of those in the future. It's super fun. Lots of fun. I love to talk. More of those in the future. Subscribe if you haven't already. Free newsletter, subscribe to that, drop your email address, the link is down below. Free newsletters comes out every two weeks. Lots of crypto, lots of investing tips on that as well. So make sure you do that and get on board for the free newsletter. I'll see you guys at the next video.
Until then, have more fun to get more done.